What is up guys, from Z to Stone here, and in this episode I'm going to be setting up a discrete closet grow tent which will be home to one of my upcoming grows. This setup is perfect for those who are just starting out, offers a well-rounded environment from start to finish, yet still remains discrete thanks to its compact size and carbon filtration system. This season will center around three separate grows, my $100 space bucket grow, an advanced super tent which clocks in at around $10,000, and lastly this setup which is geared to be more mid-range clocking in at just under $600. It's very similar to my $300 setup featured last season, however includes some new equipment to further improve and control the grow space. Let's go through all the parts individually. Everything will be housed in this VivoSun 4x2 grow tent. Although the closet I'm using can fit a larger setup, I figured a 4x2 fits the dimensions of most standard closets, so for the purpose of being relatable, I stuck with that. I'll be using two VivoSun 270 watt LEDs hanging side by side. I've used this model before with great success and it's very affordable in terms of your average LED cost. You'd probably be fine using two other smaller 135 watt lights together, but this at least gives me the ability to adapt these lights in a larger tent down the road. For my carbon filtration and exhaust system, I'll be using this 4 inch inline kit. For my intake, I'll be using my trusty O2 Cool 12 inch fan placed near one of the tent's passive vents. To help circulate air inside the grow space, I'll also be using this tried and true hurricane clip-on fan. I've had this thing for a few years now and it's still running strong. For veg, I'll be using this adjustable humidifier by Tyrotronics. For flower, I'll be using a dehumidifier by VivoSun. Now this doesn't offer the ability to adjust the humidity level, so I might add in a cheap controller down the road depending on how well this little thing works. To control my light cycle, I'll be using this programmable timer, and to monitor the environment of my grow space, I'll be using this digital thermometer and hygrometer. Now this is everything that you'll need to get going, however I do recommend still picking up some metal ducting tape and some ratcheting rope straps as well. I'll leave all the products that I use linked in the video's description. Before we get into building the tent, I do want to give a huge shout out to Smo Nova, the artist who painted this sick canvas that you're seeing sitting behind all the equipment. He's a graffiti artist based out of Germany and created this one of a kind custom painting for the channel. To receive a piece like this from such a well known and talented graffiti artist means the world to me and it's something that I'm gonna cherish forever. Smo actually made a video documenting its creation so if you guys are into watching some super chill videos and love seeing some amazing artwork go check out his channel and spread some love. I'll leave the video linked in the description as well as a title card right up above. If any of you would like to send in some fan art I recently opened up a PO box just hit me up on Instagram and connect with me. First things first, let's get the tent set up. I like to lay out each component side by side on the ground. VivoSun does include an instruction manual, however building these are pretty straightforward. I first assemble the tent's frame. When shopping for a tent, make sure to pick up one that features metal support bars with interlocking joints. This helps increase the overall strength of the tent. After the frame is fully assembled, now comes the awkward task of draping over the mylar. Thankfully this tent isn't too tall, so it wasn't that hard. With the tent now fully assembled, we can move on to the exhaust and carbon filter setup. Before we move into the closet, I'm going to first attach a piece of ducting to this small lip on my inline fan. I'm using an adjustable metal hose clamp to join them together, and then I use a small amount of ducting tape to seal it completely. Next I hang my carbon filter using two adjustable rope straps. Once hung, I attach a piece of ducting to my carbon filter, route it up through one of the holes, and then attach it to my exhaust fan. Now I'll be exhausting all this hot air through the crawl space in my attic and out of the side of my house. I rent my house so I don't want to go drilling a ton of holes into my drywall, so I use the pre-existing holes left by my closet's light fixture. If your closet doesn't have a light fixture, I'd pass the ducting out of your closet out to the nearest window. You can use foam board to make custom doors and other little ports as well. Remember, it's incredibly important not to exhaust this air into your lung room if you don't plan on using any sort of air conditioning. Venting this air back into your closet will quickly increase your temperatures which can upset the plants. For my air intake, I first remove both passive side vents from the tent. There's one on either side. Next I place my 12 inch fan to help pull cool air into the tent. 
For air circulation, I'll be using a 6 inch clip on fan. To get it set up in the tent, I first attach a ratcheting rope strap to either side of the tent support poles and then pull it to where it's fairly tight. Next I push the tent flat against a wall and simply slide in my fan. I'll be using ratcheting rope straps to suspend my lights. I first pass them up over my ceiling support poles then attach it to either side of the light. For the seedling and veg stage, I like to keep my lights up pretty high, so for now I'll raise them as high as they can go until they need to get lowered back down. Next I put in my humidifier and finally the setup was ready to go. For nutrients I'll be using the Green Sunshine Company's new natural dry amendment Earth Dust in combination with some compost teas throughout the grow. Yes that means you guys will witness my first ever soil grow. They include an amendment for the overall veg growth as well as a boost which helps fatten those buds up later on in flower. Although I'll be running photo periods in my main tent, for this grow I'll be revisiting Mephisto Genetics again and running the Ripley's OG which is said to be one of their heaviest yielding autos strains. Let's see what this setup looks like powered up. Although I'm really excited about my RDWC grow this season, I can tell you that these more simple setups provide such a relaxing and enjoyable experience. I love tinkering with new equipment and building some ridiculous setups, however these simpler builds take you from start to finish and are very user friendly. This setup is perfect for the beginner grower. Its simplicity makes it really easy to manage and the fact we're using dry amendments means it's going to be a lot harder for me to mess up my feedings. I think it'll be a pretty straightforward grow. There are a few things that I'm worried about though. If these Ripley OGs get as big as Mephisto claims they will, space management could become an issue in such a compact setup. There's not much vertical height in this tent which means I'll need to stay on top of my training early on to maintain my canopy and keep it spread out. The last thing I'd want is for my plants to become stressed because they're too close to my LEDs. From my experience though, these Vivo Suns allow you to get pretty up close and personal with the plants. In the last Mephisto autos I bought did flower pretty early so I'll just have to take this grow one day at a time and maintain it the best I can. Huge shout out to Mr. Green MG who won the butt of the month contest on Discord. If you guys want to enter next month's contest make sure to check out the Discord that's linked in the video's description. We have a community of over 5,000 strong and it's a great place to find help from growers around the world. If you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one help make sure to check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash from sea to stone. It's also a great way to support the channel and help keep these videos pumping out. Anyway, Anyways guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to press that thumbs up button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment and let me know what you think of these three setups and which one you're most excited about this season. I'll see you guys next week with another video. As always guys, happy growing.